Hello and welcome. In this video, what I will be trying to do is I will try to help you set up the Python environment on your Windows operating system. So we're not going to be covering Linux and Mac for this video. We're, we're going to be covering them in later videos. But in this video, we'll be covering if you have a Windows machine, how to set up Python on your Windows machine. And the reason why this is important is because in Windows, Python doesn't come pre-installed in your Windows operating system like it does with Mac and Linux. So if you have a Mac or a Linux, Python comes with the operating system itself. In Windows, this is not the case. So if you have a Windows operating system, you basically need to set up everything on your own. But as we'll see, it's not really very hard to do that on your own. So let's get started. So the first thing I'd want you to do is to head over to python.org slash downloads. And as you can see, this is where all of the different versions of Python exists. Basically, there are two major versions of Python. There is Python 2 and there is Python 3. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, Python 2 has reached what is called the end of life. What that means is basically Python 2 is not going to be supported anymore. So if there is a vulnerability, security vulnerability found in Python 2, no one from the maintainers of Python is going to fix it. If there's a bug somehow, no one's going to be able to fix it. So do yourself a favor and don't really install Python 2 because if you're starting out, you should be learning Python 3. Python 2 is pretty much dead. All right. So let's go ahead and download Python 3.8. And here I want you to notice two things. I want you to notice the path where Python is going to be installed. And I want you to write it down because we're going to use this very soon. Another thing that I want to mention is if you look at the bottom of this window, you'll see two things. You'll see install launcher for all users, which is enabled by default. And you'll see add Python 3.8 to path. And I will talk about that after we install Python. I'll talk about both of them, actually. I'll talk about what a launcher actually is, and I will talk about the path environment variable as well and what it does. But for now, let's go ahead and enable both of them. And like I said, I'm gonna talk about them later. Now let's click yes and wait for everything to be installed. And like I said, all of these files and libraries are being installed in the directory, in the path that you wrote down earlier, okay? Now, Everything is installed, so congratulations. Now your Windows operating system has Python on it. What we're going to do now is we are going to look at all of the different things that actually got installed. First of all, let's go to the command line prompt that the Windows has, and let's check where Python was actually installed. I know I asked you to write down where Python is installed, but I'll give you a little tip to check. If you don't, if you don't know or if you forgot where Python was installed, how to know where Python was installed by using the where command. So if you say where Python, what the Windows operating system will do is it will check where the Python executable was installed. You can do the same thing for files as well. So if we run this, we get two different paths. The path where Python, the path where Python was installed is the first one. And you'll find that this is the same path that we wrote down earlier. Now, let's try to run this Python executable and see what we get. So if we try to run this Python executable, we get this. This is basically what is called the Python interactive shell. The Python interactive shell is a shell, like you see. It basically allows you to input a command, and then the interpreter, the Python shell, will basically execute that command and output the result right away. So the interactive shell is very, is a very nice place to be when you're starting out, when you want to learn about a new command, for example. You come here, you experiment, you see the results right away. It's very nice for fast um, exploration or fast prototyping of things that you want to do. It's not where you will write your actual Python programs, but it's a very good place if you're just starting out and you want to learn new commands and you want to see the results right away. For example, let's print hello world. And as you can see, we get back the result immediately. Hello world is printed on the screen immediately. Uh, and then to exit the shell and go back to the command line prompt, we type exit. Okay, now, was typing the full path of Python 
necessary for us to start the Python interactive shell? The answer is no. And to prove to you that the answer is no, we could have just said Python. And as you can see, that also takes us to the shell. So how did the Windows operating system know that when we type Python, we basically mean the same Python that existed in the path that we mentioned earlier? This is where the path environment variable comes into play. So the path environment variable, what is an environment variable if you don't know what an environment variable is? An environment variable, you can think of it as a variable that stores some value. And, this, and these environment variables are going to be visible to all the programs that you run. One of these environment variables is called the path environment variable. And if you want to check what the value that this path environment variable has, you can just say echo and then percentage and then the name of the environment variable, in this case path, and then percentage. And then when you run this, you get the value that is stored in this environment variable. This value is, as you can see, it's a bunch of paths. These paths are delimited by a semicolon, okay? One of these paths is the path where Python was installed. And this is really what happened when we checked, when we enabled adding Python to the path environment variable. Basically what the operating system did is it added this path where Python was installed into the path environment variable, as you can see here. But what does that mean? The path environment variable basically is something that is used by the operating system so that when you type a command, any kind of command like Python, for example, or Dire or any of these things, if the operating system doesn't know, if you don't provide the full path of this command, the operating system, the Windows operating system, is going to look into each of the folders or each of the directories in the path environment variable and try to find the command inside of each of these directories. So that's why when you type Python, because the folder where the Python is installed is already in the path environment variable, Windows is able to see it and it's able to start the Python interpreter. So let me clear the screen and let me go to the Python interpreter again, just using the Python command. And let's do some maybe arithmetic operations like five plus two, you get seven. Uh, let's say X is equal to five and then multiply X by four, you get 20. So as you can see, whether you type the full path or whether you just say Python, you get to the Python interactive shell where you can just start typing Python commands and seeing the results right away. The Python shell, is only one of the things that got installed when we installed Python. There's another thing that I want to talk about here, which is the idle editor. So the idle editor is basically a nice graphical user interface that you can use as your Python interactive shell. Let's actually start it out. So let's head over to idle and let's start it. And as you can see, by just looking at what we get, it's essentially the same Python interactive shell that we got just in a graphical user interface. So let's see, let's for example, print hello world and we get hello world or let's do some arithmetic 54 plus 23, we get 77. Yeah, so as you can see, it's not at all different from what you can do on the Python interactive shell in the command line prompt. Okay, but this is just more of like a nicer graphical user interface that you can use. But this is not the only thing about idle. You can also write a Python script. So instead of the interactive shell where you input a command and this command gets executed and you see the result right away, you can actually write a whole file, a whole Python file that you only execute once. So for example, if you want to do this, you head over to file, new file, and now let's write a quick script let's say my first Python script and then input. And now let's save this file. So let's save it at the desktop. Let's call it test.py, save. Okay, now let's head over to the desktop. And as you can see, the test.py is over there. Now let's double click this file. So if you double click this, you'll see that the Python commands that you wrote in this file is getting executed 
and you can see the results on the screen. The thing, the application that allowed this to happen, that allowed you to double click a file and have this file getting executed, this is what the launcher is. So remember when you installed Python, there was something called a launcher that you installed with Python. The launcher is the program that allows you to execute a Python file by just double clicking that file. It also has other features as well, like for example, if you have multiple versions of Python uh, installed on your operating system, the launcher is what allows you to explicitly mention what, what a version of Python should execute your Python script. So it has more usage than just the double clicking functionality. So we talked about how to install Python on your Windows operating system. And we talked about all the things that get installed when you do this. We talked about the Python interactive shell, which is the interactive shell that allows you to execute a command right away and see the result right away. We talked about idle, which was a nicer graphical user interface that is basically the same thing as the Python interactive shell. Plus it also allows you to write a bigger Python scripts. And we talked about the launchers and what the launchers are and what they do. Okay, now you're ready to start your first Python program. Your Python setup is complete. It wasn't that difficult. Still, we had to do more steps than if you had a Linux or a Mac machine, but it's okay. It was not that difficult. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.